Welcome to uh, von Karman and uh, the Feynman Lecture on Infinitesimal Machinery. I have the pleasure of introducing Richard, an old friend and pastime associate. His background in education, I must do, I think, the routine sort of things, if it includes MIT and a PhD from Princeton in 42. Uh, in the war, he was at Los Alamos, where he learned how to pick combination locks, at which he is still quite skillful. Uh, he went to Cornell, where he experimented in swinging hoops. Uh, maybe he'll tell you about that, but probably not. Uh, at Caltech, and even before he came to Caltech, he became an expert in, in uh, drumming, and specializing in complex rhythms, particularly those of South America and recently the South Pacific. Uh, at Caltech, he learned the decoding of hieroglyphs, specializing in those from May, uh, the May Mayan hieroglyphs, and also in art, uh, specializing in nude women, which, which he's quite, quite an accomplished draftsman. And he also does jogging. Uh, he, he received a Nobel Prize. I think that was for physics, not for any of these other things. He thinks in 65, although he doesn't remember ex the exact year. I've never known him to suffer from false modesty, so I believe he really has forgotten what year he got the Nobel Prize. Uh, Dick Feynman on infinitesimal machinery. When Dick Davies asked me to talk, he didn't tell me it was going to be so elaborate with TV cameras and all this, and I'd be among friends. I didn't realize I had so many friends. And if, I would feel much less uncomfortable if I had more to say. I don't have very much to say. But of course, I'll take a long time to say it. <laughs> in, uh, in 1960, about 23 years ago, I gave a talk which was called There's Plenty of Room on the, at the Bottom, in which uh, discussed, described the coming technology for making small things and it pointed out what everybody knew, that numbers and computing and information didn't require any particular size. You could write the numbers very small until you got down to atomic size. Of course, you can't write it much smaller than a single atom. And uh, therefore, we could store a lot of information in small spaces, and in a little while, we'd be able to do that very easily. And of course, that's what happened. I also spoke about... Uh, for example, I mentioned at that time that, uh, well, what I want to do is, this talk is a kind of, uh, there's plenty of room at the bottom revisited. I'd been asked a number of times to reconsider all the things that I talked about 23 years ago and to see how things have changed and what the new situation is. So in a sense, uh, that's what the subject is more or less about. Which I should like to see the first slide, if possible. <laughs> Now I'd like to talk about what we can do today if we work as hard as we can in a laboratory. I don't mean commercially, but actually really do it with the greatest effort in the lab. And uh, Michael Isaacson from the Laboratory of Submicroscopic Studies, which is appropriate for us, has made something under the direction of an artist, an artist friend of mine named Tom Van Sant, who I believe is really the only truly modern artist that I know. And what I mean by truly modern, I mean a man who understands our culture and appreciates technology and science and the character of nature, so uh, rather than is opposed to it and incorporates it into the things that he makes. He likes na these things. So I would like to show you in the next slide something that was made, a picture by Van Sant, okay? It's an art by Van Sant. That's art, right? It represents, it represents an eye, okay? Maybe that's the eyelid and the eyebrow, perhaps, and of course you can recognize the pupil. The thing that's interesting about this eye is that it's the smallest drawing that human beings have ever made. It's a quarter of a micron, of course, 250 millimicrons, and the central spot of the pupil is something like 15 or 20 millimicrons, which corresponds to about 100 atoms in diameter. And it's the bottom of the thing. You're not going to be able to see things more than 100 times smaller than that being drawn, because by that time, you're at the size of atoms. And this is really getting pretty far down, and is as far down as we can make it. Because I admire uh, Tom Von Sant. I would like to, if you don't mind, although it may not be directly related to the subject, I'll show you some other artwork that he has created. He likes to draw eyes. 
And then the next slide, there's another I. Can I have the next slide, please? This is real art, right? I mean, look at all the colors and the beauty and the <laughs> white and so forth. That, of course, is much more appreciated as art. I know maybe some of you clever JPL guys know what you're looking at, but just keep it to yourselves, please. This is uh, his much another eye, all right? And to get some idea what you're looking at, we're going to look at that eye from a little bit further back so you can see more of the background of the picture. I've just selected the eye. So the next slide shows it at a different scale. And now the eye is smaller, and perhaps you see how he's drawn the furrows of the brow and so forth, or whatever it is that you have when you make such a drawing. Now, artist now, we want us to show it to us on another scale, looking still at a somewhat smaller scale. So let's see a little more of the background. And there you see the city of Los Angeles over here. And way up, it's out of focus and I can't find it. Yes, I need a pointer, please. And then you'll have to focus it for me. It got out of focus, unfortunately. Oh, good, it's improved. Can you see it there? <laughs> from back there, you can't? It goes from about here to here. It's a little eye. I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you wouldn't be able to see it in the projection. What it is, of course, what you had seen from the beginning was a Landstat picture of an eye that was made in the desert. Now, if this is the size of Los Angeles, you might wonder how he could make an eye that big. It's two and a half kilometers across. The way it was made by Van Sant was to set out in the desert 24 mirrors in special locations all worked out, each two feet by two feet, the mirrors, I mean, that's all, and calculated ahead of time and analyzed so that when the Landsat machine, which goes back and forth and looks at the land as it passes, as the Landsat satellite passes, its eye looks at the land and takes information for the pixels for the picture, he had the thing calculated so the moment the Landsat looked at that particular mirror, the sun was reflecting it right into the eye of the Landsat. And therefore, it oversaturated the pixel, and what would be a two-foot square mirror made a white spot corresponding to an area of several acres. And so what you saw before in the first picture was a sequence of overexposed pixels on the Landstat picture. And that's the way to make art. And that, as far as I know, is the largest drawing ever made by man. <laughs> the, uh, there is, if you looked at the original picture, I don't want to go back to that slide, a one or two pixels, that, one pixel that didn't come out, right? And when they went back to look at it, they found that the mirror had been knocked off its pedestal and there were footprints from a jackrabbit over the surface. <laughs> so we lost one pixel, he lost one pixel. Yeah, oh, thank you. Can't see, yet. Okay, we could have the lights now, please. I just, uh, oh, the point about the it's new eye is the, and the other one uh, is this, that Van Sant, for interest, wanted to make an eye much bigger than a normal eye and that's 100,000 times bigger than a normal eye. And the other eye, which is the tiny one, is 100,000 times smaller than a normal eye. And so you can get some idea of what the scale is. As we're talking about going down to that level, we're talking about the scale between that two and a half kilometer desert object and our own eye. Also amusing, and I can't resist. It has nothing to do with going small. It has to go with big. What happens if we go to the next eye, 100,000 times bigger? Then it's very close to the rings of Saturn with the pupil in the middle. <laughs> so that's the scale that we're talking about, and I wanted to use that to tell us about the scale.